Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Abdul Hayat bin Mu'in. Today, I'm going to talk about culture differences in IHRM. So, culture differences are the various beliefs, behavior, language, practice, and expression considered unique to member of a specific ethnicity, race, or, or national origin. Some examples of culture differences as they pertain to the workplace include employees who are younger or older than their co-workers, employees who hold higher degrees than others in the workplace, and individuals who grew up in the either metropolitan areas or small towns. It is said that employees often have some similarities than they do differences, but those differences can sometimes overweight the similarities. While these various differences can create a more vibrant office, they can also lead to more than a few problems resulting from culture clash. So today, we're going to make a video. We're going to talk a video about a uh, hospital dimension related on the culture differences based on Europe versus China. So the first one is power distance. In this dimension, China accepts a society with inequality, whereas the people of UK has a belief that inequality should be minimized. In British culture, the, the class system has always been an inherent tension that they are trying to reduce the inequalities in order to prevent class differential consequences. Whereas in China, they consider the capacity of leadership differ from person to person. My name is Muhammad Ayman Haizin bin Muhammad Yaman, bearing the ID of 6221521 and I'll be talking about individualism versus collectivism dimension. The latter dimension considers the degree to which societies are integrated into groups and their perceived obligation and dependence on group. Individualism indicates that there is greater importance on attaining personal goals. A person's self-image in this category is defined as I. Collectivism indicates that there is greater importance on the goals and well-being of the groups. A person's self-image in this category is defined as we. The fundamental issues addressed by this dimension is the degree of interdependence of a society maintains among its members. It has to do with whether people's self-image is defined in terms of I or we. In individualist society, people are supposed to look after themselves and their direct family only. In collectivist societies, people belong to in-groups that take care of them in exchange for loyalty. Malaysia, with a score of 26, is a collectivistic society. This is manifest in a close long-term commitment to the member group. Be that a family, extended family or extended relationship, loyalty in a collectivist culture is paramount and overrides most other societal rules and regulations. Such societies foster strong relationships where everyone takes responsibility for fellow members of their group. In collectivistic societies, offence leads to shame and loss of face. Employer-employee relationships are perceived in moral terms like a family link. Hiring and promotion take account of employees in groups where management is the management of groups. Finland, on the other hand, scores at 63 is an individualist society. This means there is a high preference of a loosely knit social framework in which individuals are expected to take care of themselves and their immediate families only. In individualist societies, offence causes guilt and a loss of self-esteem. The employer-employee relationship is a contract based on mutual advantage. Hiring and promotion decisions are supposed to be based on merit only. Management is the management of individuals. And now, I'll be talking about the masculinity culture I mentioned. A high score indicates that the culture is a masculine culture. In this dimension, it indicates that society will be driven by competition, achievement and success, with success being defined by the winner or best in the field. A value system that starts in school and continues throughout organizational life is the masculinity culture. On the other hand, a low score indicates that the culture is a feminine culture. In this dimension, it means that the dominant values in societies are caring for others and qualities of life. A feminine society is one where quality of life is the sign of success and standing out from the, uh, from the crowd is not admirable. The fundamental issues here is what motivates people wanting to be the best. 
and on the feminine side, liking what you eat. Malaysia has a score of 50 in the masculine activity. With an intermediate score of 50, a presence for this dimension cannot be determined. Finland, on the other hand, scores a 26 on this dimension and is thus considered a feminine society. In feminine countries, the focus is on working in order to live. In order to live. Managers strive for consensus. People value equality, solidarity and quality in their working lives. Conflicts are resolved by compromise and negotiation. Incentives such as free time and flexibility are favoured. Focus is on well-being, status is not shown, an effective manager is a supportive one. And decision-making is achieved through involvement. Uh, hi guys, uh, Assalamualaikum. My name is uh, Zasmi. Okay, today I would like to talk about uh, several things uh, about how state dimension, which is a part of cross-cultural management on international human resource management. Uh, okay. okay, I want to think, I would like to talk about avoidance of uncertainty. Okay. Uh, for for your information, UK doesn't know consider the importance of avoiding uncertainty. Their general attitude is like they don't want not to take necessary uh, step before any as is, as uncertainty we, uncertainty become. Okay, in uh, in an ambiguous situation, their comfort and belief they could overcome it. And for the Chinese people, they are also comfortable with ambiguity. Uh, their language also has meaning which state the degree of ambiguity and they, uh, they are entrepreneurial and adaptable. So that's a, a different thing about, I think they're not different, uh, always uh, something similar. Uh, about UK uh, and Chinese so that's it and next okay next uh, I would like to talk about orientation for long term uh, between UK and US in host, uh, host state dimension okay in this dimension comparison, comp uh, comparison China stand as a very pragmatic society their people believe uh, that true depend on uh, various various and according uh, some situation and they have also have ability to adapt tradition uh, very easily uh, for UK it cannot be determined in the culture of British whether it is a dominant uh, dominant preference so there's a lot thing uh, some uh, sorry not a lot thing some several thing of uh, 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 for key cultural uh, difference between UK and US on how state dimension. Uh, three. Thank you for watching. Stay home and stay safe.